Hi, I'm Laurel Thompson. Today I'm going to demonstrate détaché and other sustained bow strokes. When moving beyond basic straight bows, you need to understand the various articulations and markings discussed in the text portion of this chapter. You'll also need to know the type of sound you're looking for so you can easily determine the type of bowing to use in any given situation. Andre Granat, violinist and professor at the University of Southern California's Thornton School of Music, notes that despite any misconceptions you might have, there are only three types of bow strokes. Those in which the bow stays on the string and does not stop between notes, those in which the bow stays on the string and does stop between notes, and those in which the bow leaves the string between notes. And they all have their different flavors. I'm going to show you how to create smooth and sustained sounds using détaché and legato strokes and their variants. For notes that are separate, not included in a slur, and have no special markings, a simple détaché, which is French for detached, is generally the stroke of choice. The goal of détaché is evenness of tone and connection between notes. To achieve this, the pressure and bow speed must remain the same throughout. Though it's usually played in the middle or upper half, détaché can be played anywhere in the bow. The best way to practice détaché initially is to simply play even, continuous quarter or eighth notes within a six to eight inch area of the bow. Start with your open strings. Your primary motion will come from different sections of your right arm depending on where you choose to play in the bow. If you are in the middle or upper half, your primary motion will be in the forearm, facilitated by the elbow joint. If you are near the frog, your primary motion will be in your upper arm, facilitated by the shoulder. Every primary motion needs passive motion in the wrist and fingers to maintain a straight stroke. So stay relaxed and review the earlier chapters of this Strings Guide series if your bow is sliding around. As you play, Focus on creating sustained sound by using even pressure and speed and continuous motion. There should be no breaks in sound between the down bows and up bows. Keep your fingers relaxed and flexible and they will naturally bend a little to help provide a smooth turnaround. You will hear the slight click of the changes, but this should not be accentuated. Sometimes the volume variation is near the tip change. If so, practice slowing down the bow into the change. Stay fluent and fluid in your body because your tone quality will gradually mirror your level of tension or relaxation. If going all the way to the tip is a stretch for you, simply don't go that far. Most importantly, as you practice détaché, listen carefully. Focus on evenness of tone and volume throughout. This is the only way to tell if the mechanical adjustments you're making in your practice are actually working. Once you have a solid détaché sound on one string, practice moving back and forth between two. D-A, D-A, D-A. Be conservative with the activities of your right arm, especially if you want to go faster someday. Rather than use the entire arm to make string changes for shorter strokes, focus on a rotary motion in the forearm. As 
the length of the detaché stroke becomes even shorter and its pace faster, it's wise to move the primary motion down the arm into the wrist. Its smaller range of motion provides quick changes without the tension that would be hard to avoid with a forearm moving this fast. Remember to keep the fingers passive to keep the bow on track. Taken even faster, détaché becomes a tremolo, a very short, sustained stroke played near the tip. Here, active motion may even enter the fingers for the tiny fast strokes that add intensity to passages. For such a minimal stroke, some find it easiest to even lift the pinky. Slur notes that include tenuto lines indicate the need for a portato stroke, Italian for carried, which is basically a series of detaché strokes in one bowing direction. Like détaché, there is no audible break in sound between notes, but rather a slight swelling or pulsing for each note, achieved by applying slightly more pressure. The bow literally dips in and out of the string, like a rowboat drifting over quiet waves on a lake. The bow should remain on the string the entire time. Listen more closely. And... stroke is often used when playing dotted rhythms that would otherwise call for détaché. Linking, say, a dotted quarter note with an eighth note helps manage bow distribution and maintain an even dynamic across the uneven rhythm. In these cases, this stroke is sometimes referred to as a hooked bowing. The musical term legato, Italian for tied together, indicates passages requiring smoothness and connectedness. As a type of stroke, it means two or more notes slurred together in the same bow. Legato can be played with short amounts of bow or the whole bow. Since the legato stroke generally amplifies any difficulties you might have with smooth string changes, I'll focus on that aspect of the technique. Students often have trouble with string crossings because they don't prepare to move to the new string soon enough. This can cause them to thud onto the new string, miss the timing, or rock with such speed at the last moment that they accidentally hit the string on the other side of their target string or the edge of the instrument. The pedagogue Ivan Galamian recommended a subtle, close approach to the new string, perhaps even thinking of the moment of the string crossing as a grace note double stop. A very slight pressure of the bow, just as the crossing is made, he said, will help further in binding the tones together. Similarly, when crossing back and forth between strings, stay as close to the two strings as possible. For example, when rocking back and forth between the A and E strings of a violin, it makes no sense to rock almost to the C bout of the instrument and nearly over to the D. Instead, try... A 
much more minimal motion. Minimize your motions for smoothness and accuracy, especially when increasing the tempo of a passage, no matter what type of stroke you're playing. You've likely heard stories of advanced players who, upon changing teachers, are given the assignment to play only long bow strokes on open strings. No repertoire, not even a scale. As simple as a sonfier, or playing a long sustained tone, might sound, producing long bow strokes with even tone, a consistent sounding point, and smooth bow changes is one of the most difficult feats the bowing arm will ever do. Practice initially just on open strings, the sonfier covers everything that will be necessary for detaché and legato, and aids bow control in general. Students and teachers often move on quickly to fancier bow techniques or focus mainly on left-hand oriented melodies, but a few minutes of simple, sustained, slow bows at the beginning of your daily practice can uncover and fix bowing issues that could otherwise make more advanced strokes and good tone difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. Once you have single open strings down, add open string double stops, string changes, dynamic variations, and gradually scales to your practice. Here's a double stop. An example of dynamic variation could be going from soft to loud and back again. And for scales, you get the idea. Perhaps most importantly, if practiced mindfully, Sonfier sensitizes a player's ears to increasingly subtle tone qualities and variations, creating the ability to someday craft just the right tones, articulations, and nuance for any story. I'm Laurel Thompson. Thank you for watching Strings Guides. Mm -hmm.